Jen from Fabulous Paper Emporium. Today we have not one, not two, not even three, but we've got four elements in this tutorial. And the reason why I did four is, I, well, A, I kept on adding, <laughs> but B was these are things that you can use as um, table decorations for your holiday. Um, meals, dinners, gatherings, that kind of thing. So I just felt like I could, I mean, you could use all four, you can use a couple, um, and every single part of this could also be used as like a, a table, uh, place setting, um, table. Oh my gosh. Now the name is not even coming to me. Give me one second. I have a place card holder. <laughs> I knew I had it written down somewhere. I apologize. <clears throat> so what we have here today. So this is what I've chosen as my place card holder. It can also double as a card and I think they call it a TB card. And the reason why you could use this as a card is there's actually a piece of Velcro back here that would allow you to lay this flat and send it in the mail if you wish. But I feel like that would maybe be a little bit complicated for people that they wouldn't necessarily know to fold it. And my little Velcro dots, I got these at Michael's and I love them because they're, they're small, they're adhesive and, um, really easy to use. So that is the place card holder that I that I came up with. But like I said, any of these could be used as place card holders as well. So this is the napkin ring that we made. Um, again, all of this is with cardstock. So, you know, and some fabulous decorative, decorative paper. And so this too could also easily be used with as a, a place card holder in the sense that you could put somebody's name here with a, maybe a little Merry Christmas and somebody's name underneath. I decided to use stamps that I really haven't used before. Um, it's an interesting stamp set. So I'm getting used to obviously the, um, the, the spacing. <laughs> so this was my, I think fifth try. So that was kind of as good as it was going to get yesterday. And, um, this would be to hold silverware. So maybe if you're having like a buffet style or a uh, family style, you could easily have these, um, set up with your silverware tucked in. And I did leave some space. So there is space here for, for some silverware. And, uh, again, this, instead of having Merry Christmas, or you could have this with maybe the person's name up here in the pocket, that would certainly be, uh, you know, it would be a lovely addition as well. And this of course is the very last, well, I guess it's the first thing, but anyways, the last thing that I have on my list, excuse me, of things today. And this is a Christmas cracker. So this is, um, I don't know, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, you can get these little snaps, these Christmas snaps, and this would feed right through. Of course, I didn't have this open because I don't actually have one in there, but <clears throat> this would feed through. There's usually um, a hat, and I'll go through the hat. Sorry, hard to get those out. So this little Christmas, this snap would, would feed through here and basically you would tape that to the inside and then also tape it to the inside on the other side. And so basically what happens is you and your neighbor <laughs> go ahead and pull the Christmas cracker and whoever ends up with the biggest piece, it gets the prize inside. And the nice thing about making them yourself is that you can totally customize them. You can, um, again, use this as your, um, your place card holder. You could easily put, um, cut out a little circle, an oval, what have you, and put that on here with maybe a Merry Christmas and the person's name. So that would further allow you to really kind of customize 
the goodies inside, whether it's chocolates, candies, um, little toys, that kind of thing. So that works out really well. And I was going to say something else and now I can't remember. Oh, and also of course, inside goes a hat. So I will be making the tissue paper hats as well. Um, so I guess that's really kind of five things, but there's a lot in this one. All of these are so super simple. Um, I was amazed and I've been putting off making these for my own celebrations, for my own um, Christmas uh, dinners. And so I was really happy to, um, having made these. So I will be sharing with that with you today. So lots to go through. We will get started with the silverware holders, which is this one. And I apologize if you hear any noise going on in the background. We are still in the middle of renos, although we are in the home stretch. And I cannot even say how thankful I am for that. Although not sure if I'm going to be able to live through this last little bit. It has been trying at the, you know, the very least it has been, it has been a, a journey for sure. And I'm not sure I want to, um, I don't think I want to, uh, to go through this again anytime soon. So <laughs> anyhow, so for your silverware holder, we are going to need some pieces of cardstock and some beautiful designer paper. So what I did was, is the designer paper, all of this paper, by the way, and I was forgot to kind of got a little bit sidetracked and excited to get started. So all of this paper, by the way, comes from the Christmas time uh, paper collection and the paper collection is by photo play. And I have used all of my papers are, in here. So they have these lovely eight by eight, uh, paper pads. And I think I've shown this before. So, and included in their paper pads are these templates for little gift tags. Um, I think on the other side, there is this, uh, pillow box and again, some more gift tag shapes. So, you know, the, the, the covers, the back cover, back and front covers certainly go a long way and you can utilize basically every inch of this paper pad. So obviously everything is double sided. There's 24 sheets. There's three of each design and some, just some beautiful, everything coordinate coordinates with each other. And you've got these wonderful little cut apart, cut aparts, which I've also used in my, uh, decorating of the assortment of your table decorations. So I've used a combination of the 12 by 12 collection kit uh, or collection pack, as well as the eight by eight paper pack. So there's a little bit of everything in, in what I'm showing you today. So obviously I've chosen uh, this interesting, it's a very unique, it's kind of like a little steampunkish, um, very vintage looking, and that's typically what, uh, what graphic 45 is known for is very vintage, uh, looking or very vintage inspired papers. So if that is your, if that is what you kind of tend towards, uh, to lean towards, then I would definitely check this paper pack out. Um, so we're going to get back to this. <laughs> so the pieces that I have here now, this is, is a good, you know, a nice weight cardstock. If this is something you're planning on using year after year, which you totally could. Um, and I definitely would recommend is I backed it with a piece of this craft cardstock just to add a little bit more reinforcement. And I feel like that will probably, last for years to come. So we have the craft card stock and that is cut at four and one eighth by seven and one eighth. This designer paper is cut at four by 12 and we'll be scoring this as well. And then for my little decorative tag, I have cut a piece of this craft card stock is three and one eighth by four and a quarter. I used one of the little cut aparts, which looks like a little stamp. So I'll be using that for the corner. We have some ribbon. 
which I'll be, I wrapped the ribbon after I put it on and we're definitely not going to do that this time. We're going to wrap it before because it was really challenging to get that ribbon to stay. So, um, so we'll be using some ribbon. We also have some foam pieces underneath here, but if you're not a fan of foam, then by all means, that just gets glued right onto the paper and away you go. But it's super simple. They come together really quickly. And the lovely thing about this is that you can get three out of a, pa a sheet of 12 by 12. So if you are making these en masse, then I, which I definitely would recommend if you do go this way for your holiday dinner, then um, do keep this sheet together. You can do your scoring first and this way you're scoring once and then cutting once instead of doing all your cutting and then you have to score three separate sheets. So for this one, I'm going to set this aside because I haven't scored that yet and realize that I've got some things in the way. I'll move that out of the way, get my scoreboard. <clears throat> if you are using a directional design, which this is, you are going to put it face down and the top is going to be on your left. So I'm taking this, I'm flipping it that way, okay? And we are going to be scoring at seven inches and we are scoring at ten and a half. And it's as simple as that. So if you don't have a scoreboard, no need to sweat. It is totally fine. There's only two little lines. All you would do is take your ruler, mark at seven at the top and the bottom, mark at ten atop, at ten and a half at the top and the bottom just make a little pencil mark and then uh, fold it over. So for this one, we are going to, now that I have it the right way, we are going to fold seven, the, the seven inch score mark. We're gonna fold that upwards. We're really gonna to wanna to burnish that. And then at the 10 and a half, we're gonna fold that down. And that way we have a little pocket. burnish that really well. What we are going to do as well is you're going to stick in your ruler or you can grab your cutlery. I was remiss and did not bring up my cutlery. Um, to be quite honest, I'm not even sure where I would find my cutlery right now, but I could have grabbed some of the reusable, I guess, disposable uh, cutlery that we've picked up along the way from our um, takeout excursions over the last week and a bit. So anyways, so you do want to put something in, in the pocket just to kind of get the paper. You want to massage the paper and get it used to the fact that there is going to be something, um, cause you don't want it like if it, if it's a pocket that only a sheet of paper will, 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 uh, fit in. Obviously you could use this as like a super large, Maybe if you're making some coupons, I've seen that for like gifts and things like that. You could always use that for this. Use this for that. <laughs> but uh, you do want it to to be some not exactly laying flat. And this gives us a little bit of a pocket like you can see here. Oops, I'm getting all that that there is a little bit of space. You know, I can, I can really put my finger in there without it being, you know, very restrictive or feeling like you're going to tear the paper. So just something to keep in mind. I'm going to set that aside again. And then we're just going to run a bit of our score tape. Grab that. Now this is just the quarter inch score tape. We're only running it along this middle panel, right? So when you open this, you just want a strip on either either side, that's it. You could use liquid glue, but, um, oops, I'm grabbing the 1 8th, we want the, the quarter. Um, you could use a combination of the two if you wish. It is completely up to you. If it becomes a little bit more challenging to see because it is, you know, if you're using a pattern paper especially, those can be way challenging. So I'm just gonna put that on either side. 
like so. Don't necessarily need anything at the bottom. Okay, so that will glue down like this. Before I do any of my gluing, I am taking out my little ink pad because I do want I do want to ink my edges really quickly. And I've mentioned this before. Now because we have a couple of folds as well, so I'm doing the sides. And this was what I wanted to show. Not that it makes like a huge, huge difference, but it does get rid of that white edge, which, you know, it just adds a little bit of, of something. It just, it, you don't have this white line that is distracting, but I'm also going to do this along the bottom. And I'm going to do this along this folded edge as well. Now, again, my paper is super dark, so it's not like it adds much to the overall, but if you had a, you're using a paper that is a little bit lighter, it can just add that little bit of extra. So I've got this piece done. I can take off my adhesive backing. Come on. I know. There we go. Okay, so taking off my adhesive backing, I'm just going to put this in more for like a guide than anything else. So I've got my fingers on the, the ruler on the middle piece, and I'm just going to lightly press down on the sides. Perfect. And this way I know I'm not pushing, you're not pushing outwards. I'm putting my fingers here and then just lightly tapping with my other fingers on either side. So that is good. You can, I decided to kind of tack this little piece down just because I found like no matter how hard I burnished, it was still popping up every once in a while. So I'm just gonna run a little bit of score tape again on either side and then that piece will be fine. Just make sure you don't go crazy and go, don't go too far past. If you go past the score line, it's not the end of the world because obviously we're folding it. So it's not, you know, the intention is, is to get this. Oh my goodness. This does not want to come up for me. Um, the intention is to fold it down and get it, get it stuck to, you know, this piece. So uh, my nails are like completely shot. My fingers are so sore. Wow. This is not working out. There we go. Okay. And then we just fold that over again, not pressing from the center out because we do, we don't want to have it super tight at the top. So I just kind of tap that down. So we still have our pocket that is nice and, uh, open for our silverware. Okay. So now that that is done, I'm going to just really quickly, go over my sides as well for here. And again, you see it, it's not a huge change, but there is, there is, it adds, it adds, it doesn't take away. It adds to the beauty of your project. And the more, the more you keep this, um, not parallel, the words are definitely, I'm definitely a little bit sleep deprived, so I cannot think of the word parallel. Anyways, the more you have this leaning to the front, the more ink is going to show up on the front of the cardstock. The more you keep it like this, then the more it um, will just cover the sides. And so it's completely up to you how you want to have that. Again, this is your project, so you do whatever you feel. I'm doing this to my little um, label panel, sentiment strip, whatever you want to call it. That's going to go at the front with my Merry Christmas stamp. 
Okay, and then the only other thing that I want to ink up a bit is my little stamp because it does have some white on the edges. So I'll get rid of that really quickly. And we are done for that. Okay, so um, now would be the time. Now I, when I was layer, I layered all of this first and then I cut this decorative corner. It's completely up to you. If you do the decorative corner before you layer it, you'll get the same, the same, um, framing on all the way around. So because I did this afterwards, obviously it cut out and now that is totally, you know, in line on the corner. So what I am going to do right now is I'm going to take my fancy crop a dial and I've used this before. Um, I've used the, the stub edge, so I'm going to use the scallop edge this time. And I'm just going to go around. I'm going to have to re-ink these corners. I should have thought of that before. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my top layer with my decorative paper. Make sure that's in there. Okay. Perfect. So just get that inked up a little bit. And you can just angle your sponge. The corners are going to get a little bit more potentially because just because of the shape and that's fine. That is okay. And if you wanted to do the same thing with your Merry Christmas, you could easily do that. I might do, no, you know what? My everything fits in perfectly there. I don't want to mess around with that too, too much. So I am going to start layering now. So that will layer up there quite nicely. And you see the difference is I've got the frame now is going all the way around the outside and not just on the sides that have not been cut. So I'm going to grab my liquid glue really fast, glue this up, going around all the edges or the sides kind of at the end of this liquid glue. So I'm really having to squeeze, <laughs> get it to come out. There we go. All right. Get this layered up and we are well on our way. Completing our lovely table decorations. And you could easily use all the same pattern for all of these, but I don't know how many you're going to be able to get. So if I, I figured if I'm using different pieces of paper, same card stock, or sorry, same collection. So then everything is going to go with each other. It's all going to coordinate. You're easy. You don't have to worry about, about, uh, being super conscious of your measurements. I mean, it's a good thing to be, but you know, this way you don't have to worry if you make a mistake that you're going to be totally fine. You'll have enough paper. And like I said, I'm using a combination of the eight by eight as well as the, um, as the 12 by 12. Okay. So they come with these cute little stamps. There's a lot of, um, a lot of cut apart sheets, but there's quite a few. Um, I showed you some of the eight by eight. I'll show you some of the, if I can find them, I know they're in here. There we go. There's one of the sheets. So there's one of the sheets. So these obviously came from the eight by eight, this stamp, because these are the same stamps, but obviously larger. So completely would fit there. It just would take up a lot of that area, a lot of that real estate. So completely up to you, but some really cool cut aparts that come in there. And like I said, the same cut aparts are in here, but just on a smaller scale, if I can find them. There we go. So there's those. That wasn't the one with the stamps though. There we go. So there's two sheets of cut aparts. There's this one. There's this one. 
lots to make tags and gift. I was going to say gift cards, <laughs> but gift tags, lots of, uh, of, of fantastic paper and cut aparts to make gift, gift tags. Okay. So one more thing that I need to do on here is I just need to stamp really quickly. I had not stamped my sentiment. So I'm just going to grab my Merry Christmas really quickly. Get that inked up. I think this stamp pad has seen better days, but that's okay. I'm going to take that, try to get that as centered as possible without getting my head in frame. Push that down so I've got lots of good contact. And there we go. So there we have my lovely Merry Christmas. And before we tack this down, I did say I'm going to cut this and glue it before. <laughs> Lesson learned. I am going to go across. I didn't quite give myself as much room on this one, but I think I'm just going to go across like that and cover a little bit of the stamp and that's fine. There we go. So I'm just going to apply a line of liquid glue. I could use the, um, the one eighth, uh, the one eighth, um, score tape was just a little bit too wide. So I opted not to go for that. All right. So I've got it glued down there. Just going to put a little bit of glue on either side here get that tacked down. I cut way too much ribbon in my haste in my excitement to get this done. <laughs> I cut far too much ribbon, but that's okay. Oops. I think I ran my scissors through that. That's lovely. Oh, well, not again, not paying attention to what I'm doing in one spot. Got glue on my scissors. Oh, geez. Okay. Let me cut that first and that way I don't have to fiddle around with it anymore. Okay. That's looking good. Love it. Um, add your foam. If you are wanting to add foam, I've got some foam squares that I will add just three across the back. One, two, three, get those peeled. And then we can Put that on just like that. There we go. Now we've got two. Amazing. Okay. So first thing is done. We've got our silverware holder. The next thing we are going to do is our place card holder. And that is this lovely TP card turned place card holder. I just want to put that in my glue while I get this, our next thing set up. Okay. So again, just a quick reminder, this is our lovely TP card. If you were using it as a card, you could easily substitute one of these panels for just like a white or, um, something that you could write your sentiment on, do some stamping, that kind of thing. But I just decided because it was just going to be used as a place card holder or, I guess it's not really a place called card holder, but like a part of my seating arrangement, <laughs> then I was just going to do the same design all the way around. And that way there's a bit of un uniformity to it. So we are going to start and I have not cut my base. I just noticed that. Hmm. That is weird. <laughs> okay. Give me one quick second and I will have to cut my bases. I'm just going to be right back. Bear with me one sec. Okay there. So here we have our three base pieces. So this is the base to this, to our place card holder is not one piece. 
we have three different pieces that have created this shape. So um, we'll get to that right now as I bring in all my other pieces to make this beautiful um, seating holder name tag thingy. <laughs> okay, so first we are gonna need three pieces that are cut at by four by four. You could use designer paper if you wanted to. I'm using plain cardstock again to kind of go with the rest of the theme. I'm going with this craft cardstock. The next layer, which will be our decorative paper, um, you're gonna need two pieces that are three and three quarters by three and three quarters. And we're gonna score these, we're gonna cut these. And I already have, since there are only three panels, one, two, three, on the, the TP card, I actually had one left over from that cut. So you're gonna need, again, so depending on how many you're making, you'll definitely need three of the triangles per per a uh, TP card. So uh, we'll be cutting these together as well. I've decided to decorate these little tiny pieces that normally would not have gotten covered by this cardstock or that designer paper. And those, these are cut at one and a half by one and a half. And again, we'll be cutting these on the diagonal to fit the triangles. And I also have my little sentiment, which I think I, <laughs> which I, did I stamp on the wrong thing? No, I, I have my little, my little, um, stamp that I used for the top part. And then I just fussy cut around that. And you will also need for your name tag, a piece that is two inches by three quarters. And I just realized and I don't have that one cut either, but two and uh, sorry, two by three quarters. I'm just going to get that cut really super quick. Okay. So I am going to, I just wanted to show a little bit of the fussy cutting and what you are going to do if you are fussy cutting is you move your paper, not your scissors. And that way, you can get, it is a lot easier to manage and to wield your paper and go as slow as you need to go. If you need to cut off this excess, just go ahead and cut off the excess. I do that quite a bit just because sometimes it is super challenging to have all that paper putting added pressure on your scissors. So, um, you can always come back and trim if there's any sharp edges from where you've done your fussy cutting. So I am just, and it doesn't have, it's not going to be a hundred percent perfect. So do not worry. Do not stress about it. It is going to look beautiful. So that's all I can say with that. Obviously the more complex the shape, the more challenging the cuts, but it is totally fine. You can do it. Just it, it's like anything. It takes practice. Those who are really good, I, I just make it look so easy. So you just is something that you're just going to have to, you know, practice and get used to. So I'm just going to look around a little bit because I know I've got some sharp edges and there we go warmest holiday wishes. My flag is cut. Okay. I'm going to get rid of all that. And what I didn't do for that one that I have done for just about everything else is I haven't inked my edges, but I'm going to wait on that because there are some folds and I want to ink the folds as well as going around. So putting those aside on our base pieces, we are simply going to score them you can, I, you can score them with your ruler instead of just folding. And the cardstock that I'm using is, um, because it's a craft cardstock, I feel like that definitely warrants being scored first before you start folding. It just makes it easier 
makes it easier all the way around. So I just take my ruler, my bone folder, and away you go. If you happen to have a little scoring tool, if you happen to have, if the edge of your pen cap, so like even this, you would just have to account for. So what I would do is if you wanted to use the end, end then you could line it up with the edge line it up with the edge just make sure i'm not putting any pressure on this right now i'm just wanting to get this down so that i actually have i'm going from corner to corner because this is obviously a lot thicker than my bone folder so just a quick little tip as i go through this and then we're going to meet our corners I like doing it away from me meet our corners whoops get that pressed down we do need our bone folder at that point to burnish the edges again with this one burnish and with our last one we are going to whoops i really can't see if those meet up there we go there Okay, perfect. So you're going to take one of, I'm going to fold them backwards and forwards there. So you're going to take one of your squares that have been scored and burnished. You want the score line running north south. So here is my piece and I have the score line running vertically. I'm going to take my next square and my this side, my left side, is running just to the right of the score line. You don't want to cover the score line of your base piece. And this will also put this score line in line with my base piece with the with the top right side. So that's how we're going to lay that one down. So I'm putting my glue. Now there is a method to this. So I am putting my glue, not all the way, but I am putting it part of the way on the top piece. My lovely drawing there <laughs> with my glue. And then I'm just going to place this, like I said, you want your tips to meet at the top and then I'm going to fold that over, make sure everything is in line. And then if you feel like it needs uh, some additional glue here, you can just feed that in a little bit. Whoops. I went a little bit crazy there with the glue. Okay. So now that one, that piece is done and we're going to do basically the same, same thing, but on the opposite side. So now I'm going to put my last piece the same way tips at the top, my score line running along the lot, this line. And then the right side this time is just going to be up to that score line. So I am leaving a little bit of space so my base can fold properly. Let me make sure I don't start gluing the wrong thing. That has happened from time to time. And I can come down here a little bit more. Alrighty, so now we place that just like that. Flip that over. Oops, went a little bit over, but that's okay. Liquid glue dries clear and it's on the inside anyways. Okay, so now we have our TP card. Basically, the basic form of our TP card is now done. So what I just want to do really quickly is I'm going to grab my ink and I am going to go to town on the edges. Now what I should have done is probably inked because I'm not going to be able to get these edges because it doesn't fold that way. 
but I'm not stressing about it. It is what it is. We can fold that. All the fold lines, I definitely want to get those. We get that fold line. We can get this one. Just a little kind of quick dry. Run it over really quickly with your ink. Doesn't have to. That is the ink that I the ink pad I'm using is well loved. It is quite old, so I'm not. I don't get a lot of ink on it. I'm not using. The newer ink pad that I have is is quite juicy, so um, I'm not using that one this time because I can really I'm so used to using this this older one that I don't get like tremendous amounts of ink, so it ends up working out to my benefit when I'm doing things like inking my edges. Okay, so now that that is done. Just a little bit of cutting needed for my squares. So again, you're going to have two squares like this and you can cut them with your scissors. You can cut them with your, um, your paper trimmer either way. I just am going to have a quick look now your whichever way you're going to do it, you can put, you know, the right side over the left or the left side over the right, whichever way you're going to do it just make a plan. <laughs> so if I'm going to go left over right, which I am, I don't have to worry about this piece, but I have to worry about these other pieces. And I do not want to have anything that is like upside down. So again, I have a directional paper that, you know, you're going to want to, to play around with a little bit to make sure that you're not maybe putting this piece. So I have my Christmas tree upside down in that one. This one, it would be, it would be okay that way. It's a little bit sideways, but you're going to end up with something that's going to be sideways anyways. And when I'm cutting these ones is where I'm going to be a little bit more particular. So if I cut that one on the diagonal here, then that would mean this one would be like that, which is pretty sideways. Um, but I think that's okay because you're going to end up with something like that anyways. So that is how I'm going to cut this one is I'm going to cut this one that way. I'm just going to use my paper trimmer really quickly and slide that in. Again, you want to get your tips point uh tips lined up along the edge where your blade is running i move my blade to the middle and that way i cut outwards and i'm not bending either one of my points so that is my simple tip for that and so we're going to put this piece there well we could put that piece there i don't think this one works so well over here it all depends on what you're going to have facing outwards. So let's see how that looks. I'm just going to grab that really quickly. So that one I know. Yep, yeah, I think that's how I actually I think that's how I'm going to put that together. It just depends on what you have that is going to be showing you know, facing. So once you have it put together, if there's one panel that kind of is a little bit you know, wonky. Well, that just goes to the back. It's, it's a super, super easy fix. Um, plus, I mean, really one of the panels is just going to be at the front. So they put the nicest one at the front and away you go. <laughs> so, um, I think that's what I'm going to do here. Cause this way, this way I have two panels that are nice and one panel can go towards the back. All right, so I'm going to glue these panels quickly, apply my liquid glue to the back, not worrying about the panel that will be unseen. Oh, 
just noticed I did not get that piece at all. I got too distracted with my folds. <laughs> and we're gonna put. So the nice thing with the with the double sided paper too, is we have um, I've used the other side to go on these two. Well, actually, there's gonna be three by the time you glue it down. We're gonna be using three of these little triangles that is on that are from the paper from the opposite side or the pattern on the opposite side are going to be used on the bottom so it's really nice when you have the double-sided paper that it doesn't require any more any additional thought to what can sometimes be already an arduous process figuring out what paper you're going to be using. Sometimes that is the project that is not what take it's not what takes a while. It's the, you know, picking the paper. So here I'm just going to use my scissors. It's a small enough that I line it up on my blade. I line the bottom tip and the top tip and I snip and away you go. Okay, so I'm just going to glue these and then I'm going to get my, because in order to figure out where the third triangle goes for our little base, we are going to need to actually assemble this. So I'm going to grab the little, so these are little dots that are um, Velcro. And if I can get the pack open, which I can't, so I'm just going to slide them out. So you get two packs, um, and I've glued them, I like not glued them, but I put the opposite sides together. So this way I have something all ready to go. I'm just going to peel one. So I've got the two sides that are together. I'm going to fold this and I like to put the Velcro kind of in this corner. So I'm going to just glue that on, stick that on right there. It doesn't require any additional adhesive in the way of like liquid glue or anything like that. And I just press that down. And the first couple of times you may have to be a little bit gentle in opening that. And then I just want to press that down. You could use a magnet as well if you wanted to. There just isn't a cover for this one. So you could always cut yourself a sheet of, you know, it could even be like that's where you put your sentiment. Um, but you could cut something out to go there to cover if you wanted to use magnets as well. So this is obviously where our last triangle is going to go. So let us put that down. And with the liquid glue, I'm just going to push that into where it needs to go. There, and our base is done. So now you decide which side you kind of want to have on the front. And this to me is the nicest front. So I would, I wouldn't have used this side because this is a side with the seam. So I'm going to have my, my teepee standing this way, my stamp sentiment that we fussy cutted out. I'll be using there. I'm just going to use some of these thinner um, and smaller little foam pieces. I'm just going to put a couple on the back side really quickly. Keeping them in the middle because I do want the flags to be on either side. And there we go. Okay. So I'm going to put that at the top like so. And then the last thing we need is I use the sticker from the 12 by 12 
The 12 by 12 paper pack has stickers. It does come with stickers. The same strip is in this, in the eight by eight as well. It's the, it's Christmas time. So the sticker is obviously a little bit thinner and it has kind of like a decorative top. So I'm going to use that again for the top of my name card. I just have to find it. So the sticker sheets um, for, for Graphic 45 are really quite nice. They're, they're a heavier sticker sheet or stickers. So let me get that out. Okay. And now all I've done is I've basically given uh, enough space to fit that it's Christmas time. And so I'm going to cut that at the end like that. And we're going to place this at the top. I just want to make sure it's a little bit centered. And that way you can just write your write or stamp uh, your names on there as well. And then just kind of stick that up. If again, if you don't want to use the foam, the foam squares, you don't have to, but that just goes right there. I'm not ready to stamp on here yet, so I'm going to leave it for right now. I also just realized that I did not ink up my edges, so I will be doing that now before I forget <laughs> completely. And we have one poor soul who does not have, you know, an inked up name tag on their place place card holder and so there we have it so this is number two. Oh wait i forgot my ribbon the ribbon at the top it's just a quick little bow and when i say quick i mean i'm gonna have to probably cut an excessive amount of ribbon in order to get this bow done but it's just a quick little thing that is going to go at the top. Okay, so I've got my knot there. I'm just going to pull the sides out a little bit and just get that really tight, nice and nice and tight. And then all I used on the top was a little glue dot. So because my glue dots are massive, I've taken it, I take um, an old pair of scissors and I cut a part of it off. I use old scissors because the, the glue over time is just going to gum up your scissors and anybody who has tried to use gummy scissors before will tell you it is not fun not at all oh my goodness I fold this in half my little glue dot and then you end up with <laughs> well a little smudge of glue dot right there and that's where your ribbon is going to go so I put that right there <clears throat> and there we have it now we can you can leave these long you can have them short it really is up to you how long you want your ribbon. I am going to trim off these edges just a bit like so. And there we go. All right. Place cards done. We'll set these aside and then we will get to our next. Our next one is going to be our napkin ring. And our napkin ring, again, should come together fairly quickly. I'm going to set that aside. Won't need that again. <clears throat> so for our napkin ring, we have uh, a strip of cardstock. This is six by one and a half. I've used 110 pound for this. Again, because I want it to last a little bit longer. So... Anyways, so I, that's, that's the deal with this is 110 pound. 
And what I will do, I'm not going to do that next. I'm getting ahead of myself. So that strip, we're also going to cut an exact same size strip. So again, this is one and a half, sorry, six by one and a half of our designer paper. I think I have that upside down. I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. It's going to be a ring anyways. So that is going to layer on top. What I am going to do really quickly on here on my base piece is I do want to mark a half inch. So I'm going to take my ruler because this has the, the grid. I can just make myself a line. I've measured, I've got my end at the half inch. So I'm going to make my little line and this is going to be basically where our glue is placed right here so that we can go ahead and, you know, make our, make our napkin ring. Before I get started with that, I am going to kind of work on my base piece to get it to curl a bit. And if you've curled ribbon before, you kind of have an idea of how this, how this works, but you're wanting for the paper, at least you're wanting to just break up those fibers a little bit and get the paper to curl and it makes life so much easier when it comes to to making your glue to sorry to gluing it down and to also making it stay so we are first going to do that so we're going to do apply our glue right along here and it's not like a ton 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 but it's just going to be enough okay so I've got that tacked down. And if you wanted to ensure that this stays put, I'm just going to use two little alligator clips. Set that aside while we work on our designer paper. So because our designer paper is layering basically right over our base, the craft card stock, I want to do the exact same thing with my designer paper is I want to, again, break up the fibers, get it to love being in a circle. <laughs> and, you know, this way we can move on. It really does not take very long for the glue to kind of get set. So we're okay using this already. Depends what kind of glue. If you have a glue that takes a little bit longer, you may want to, if you're doing multiples do all these first and set them aside and then you start with your first one and kind of work down the line so this is going to layer right on top and i am going to overlap my seams a little bit just because i figure it'll add some additional stability so i am going to go around my ring whoops added a little bit of glue to the side. Okay, so as I've applied glue on it already, I am going to, you know what, I started at the wrong end. That's okay. Doesn't really matter how you apply your glue, but I do want to make sure that you've got it on the edges. Alrighty. And so here I'm going to start right there. So I've overlapped just a touch, maybe about a quarter of an inch. And then I'm going to go around and spread the love. Make sure that your sides are all even and they're all in line. Doesn't matter if a little bit peeks through. But now I am definitely going to, there's a lot of glue on there. I just want to make sure that that is all set. If you have reverse tweezers, that works too. I don't know where my set went. Oh, no, they're right there. These reverse tweezers work as well. If you don't want to use alligator clips, because they do flatten that area a little bit, you can take your reverse tweezers and just kind of set them, set them right there. And this way it gives your, your base to kind of settle and get all nice and happy all together. <laughs> I 
Um, the other things that I have done for this particular ring, and I did not show you this one. Well, I did, but right at the beginning is <clears throat> because I wanted to add some decoration to one side is I stamped over to the right on this particular one. And this way I can add my two little Christmas ornaments to there as well. I'm going to ink my edges of here, keeping with the same aesthetic of the place card holder and the place card holder and the silverware holder. All right, we can do the same thing to our Christmas ornaments. I didn't do that the first time, but I'm pretty sure I've got enough ink on here that it'll just, again, not really coloring anything, just inking the sides up. There we go. Okay, so we can layer these up so that we're giving ourselves enough of the sentiment is being shown. And what I did the first time is I glued this back ornament, the larger one, I actually glued that to the back and then I just put the front one up on a little bit of a foam, a foam square. <clears throat> I am going to do two little tiny ribbons, my favorite. <laughs> so bear with me. I'm just going to tie two little bows and we'll get those stuck down. Okay, so we've got our two little ornaments done and I did the same exact thing as the top of the place card holder. So a little bit of a glue dot on one side. Well, I actually folded the glue dot in half. And again, because this one is not all the way on the base, you just want to make sure that you don't apply your glue to everywhere. And that way it kind of goes everywhere. <laughs> and then I'm just going to grab my little foam, foam adhesive. The small ornament is basically all on the base. So this one, I don't really have to worry quite as much. I'm not really sure where I put that one in the middle. There we go. That way I've got coverage and it's not gonna kind of fold and bend easily. It's got some support. Alrighty. And then our small little ornament goes right there. Fits nicely. And then we just take our base, which is nice and secure now and is, is quite sturdy. And we'll go ahead and apply, oops, doesn't work on the side. So I just apply a little bit of glue kind of through the middle because it's circular. I don't, I'm not going to necessarily have a, a lot of space to kind of put that down but where my seams are is where I'm putting this. So my sentiment goes right where my seams are. And you center that as much as possible. And there you have it. Our napkin ring. All right, we are on project number four. Yay! <laughs> so we are on the home stretch now. And I'm going to put my glue away because we don't need it this time. 
same thing with our foam squares. We saved the best for last. And for some, the crackers are the best. For others, not so much. <laughs> so for our crackers, we are going to need one sheet that is six by 12. That's it, that's all. And we're gonna to need to score this sucker. So again, if you are making multiples, leave your sheet as a 12 by 12 sheet, and then you can come back and score everything and cut it once. And this way you're not having to score multiple times. So on your six by, by your 12 inches, obviously at the top, we are gonna score this at three, at three and a half, and at four. Then we're gonna do eight, eight and a half, and nine. Okay, and that is gonna give us our folds. Okay, this is probably the one project where I'll be like, don't burnish. And I even have myself a big note saying, do not burnish. And the reason being is you want your cracker to kind of lay and go around and, and not have any, you know, hitches in that. So what I am going to do first though, just to kind of give us a little bit, to give the paper, make it a little bit easier, just kind of rolling it in a tube a little bit. And that way it is, you know, getting used to, uh, again, like the, like we did for the napkin rings is, you know, just getting the paper used to being, you know, manipulated in a specific way. So now I'm just going to fold my score lines. And these are, are the middle one anyways. So we have the three, three and a half and four. So the three and a half inch score mark is really just a guide. And I'll show you that in a second. So how we're folding this is we're gonna have like a little M. So here we have, well, in this case, I kind of started at the other end. So we have our eight, eight and a half, nine. So it's, it's mountain, valley, mountain, and then the same thing for the three. So if this is your front, you are gonna fold down, then you're gonna fold up, and then you're gonna fold down again. So I have two M's, for lack of a better word. Whoops, that one's not folded, there we go. Okay, so see M there, M there. Okay, now how are these, how are these working? How are these gonna be our guides? Well, here is what we need in order to have these two areas that we can cinch in with our ribbon. We need to cut and make these little sharp teeth, I guess, for lack of a better word. Oh, there was one score mark. I'm sorry. There was one score mark that I completely forgot to make and I just realized it now. <clears throat> You're going to need to score also with the six inch across the top. You also need to score at five and three quarters. The reason for that is we need that little tab that will also be a guide for gluing the two sides together. Okay, so that doesn't necessarily affect anything because we do not want to, to burnish or score that. That again is just a guide. So with our two, with our fold, with our folds like this, we're actually gonna be cutting parts of this little tab that we've made out of our out of our score marks okay so I have the five and three quarter mark is on the right hand side and you can see that here it's really difficult to see it with the designer paper I apologize so on the two fold lines I'm actually gonna cut right to the five and three quarter inch right so that little tiny tab there we don't need that one. We're going to cut this one out as well. And then as we do our shark teeth, we'll be cutting that one out completely. 
So I'm going to just cut that. Okay. And then, so we're going to start by cutting at an angle. And then our next angle, we are wanting to keep, it has to stay attached at the fold, but you're wanting to keep that as kind of as minimal as possible. And this way it's not, you know, totally impossible to break, to, you know, pull the cracker. So just keep that in mind when you're doing your little shark teeth. This is probably the most time consuming part of the project. I've been told there are dies for this, but you know, it, it's something that's going to get used what, like once a year. So, um, this is a, a relatively easy and it does, you know, you can make these, nobody's going to see these, these little shark teeth. So I'm just going to show you really quickly what I've done so far. And you see this one, it probably is a little bit more than what I would normally leave. This one is, is pretty perfect. That one right there, that second one. And so you don't want to leave too much, but it does have to stay attached. If it doesn't stay, if you don't, if you cut them and there's no fold here, then you're not going to, you're going to have basically three separate parts. So just keep that in mind as you're cutting. So I'm going to continue on. I'll finish this side and then I'll catch up with you in just a second. Okay, so I've finished with this side just to show you what it looks like. So you have all these triangles or the diamond shapes. Do, they don't have to be evenly spaced. Like, uh, do not stress about it. You do want to keep them, you know, as close to in between these score lines as possible. That's your guide. And basically, we're going to repeat that same thing on this side. Right? We're going to pinch the two score lines together. We're going to cut out, oops, I flipped that over. So here's where I've got the five and three quarters. So we're just going to take our scissors and right where we have our folds, we're just going to cut that out really quickly. And that way we have our three panels for when we, when we roll it over and connect it. We're good. We're good to go. All right. I keep on flipping it over. I apologize. Okay. So we're going to do the exact same thing on this side. Okay. So I am done on this side. So before I go any further with this project, I do need to mention that like if you did have any goodies that you were wanting to put in here, now is probably the best time to do it. So I'm just going to pause on this for a minute because we do need a hat. So I'm going to use a piece of tissue paper. Everybody loves the hat. I know everybody does. So um, you can't even, you can't hate on the hat. That's for sure. So <laughs> this is a relatively large piece of tissue paper and I am trying to find my big ruler. I'm going to say, I think it is about 30 by 20. Yeah. 30 by 20 inches. So what I'm going to do first as I'm folding it, once, so my 30 inches is going, I, you probably, it does not fit in frame that much, I'm pretty sure. And if I expand out too much, <laughs> my, my desk is barely big enough to really hold everything. So I've got the 30 inches going across. I'm going to fold that. So again, 30 by 20, my 30 inches is going this way. 
So I folded it once. And then I'm gonna fold it one more time. I wanna make sure those fold lines are, are pretty good. I've got things that are preventing my progress. <laughs> okay, so folded once. We're gonna fold this one more time. And this way, one piece of 30 by 20 is gonna give us four hats. So depending on how many people you're making this for, you probably won't have to do this many times. Okay, so I've got that folded twice. And now we're gonna fold this across. Okay, so we're folding it once. We're gonna fold it twice. Again, making sure our folds are pretty neat. Okay, and we're folding it one more time. So we have a nice little bundle. Okay, and what we're gonna do with our bundle, take your scissors, and we're just gonna slice a little bit off the top and the bottom to get rid of the folds. Like I said, so this way, we're gonna be able to make four hats, or crowns, I should say. They're not hats. There we go. Okay, and then now we, so we cut the tops and the bottoms off. We're just gonna flip that over 90 degrees or, or rotate it 90 degrees. And now we're gonna to wanna to cut out of here. We're going to, I like to have the fold on this side. <laughs> just, I don't. I don't even, I don't even know. Okay, so we are going to cut a triangle. And we're gonna do one full triangle and then a half. Okay, there we go. And then we're gonna do a little triangle over on this side, trying to get trying to keep it as even as possible. Okay. And so now we can unfold these. Now 30 inches is obviously going to make a pretty big crown. So you could at this point, because I don't have a ruler that is you know, quite as, as long as um, 30 inches. So I'm gonna fold this in half and you can just, you make your um, sizing, okay? You can size this as much as you, as much as you need to. <clears throat> so for me, I am going to cut off, oops get my ruler straight here. So I've got my loose ends are at the right hand side. This is where I'm going to cut. You can't, if you cut it the other side where you have your folds, you're going to end up with two pieces and you'll have to glue them back again. So I'm just going to cut at the 14 inch mark roughly, which is about here. Okay, so I cut that because I want roughly 23 and a bit. You're going to need to obviously give yourself some room to glue these together. I'm just going to take a simple glue stick, run a little bit of a line of glue on this side. doesn't have to be gobs and gobs. It is just tissue paper after, after all. And then we're just going to take our glue end with the other side and just get those glued in place. So there you have it, your tissue paper crown. And this can, the reason why we wanted to do it now is so that we can get this all folded back up. fold that nicely because it's tissue paper it folds really well 
And this way we can get that put into our Christmas cracker before we start sealing it. And you can still add things after it's all, you know, it's just, it's taped and ribbon. So it's not, it's, it's not like you can't add it afterwards. It just, you know, maybe is a little bit more difficult to add it afterwards. So bringing back our piece, I'm going to remove the tissue paper for now. So bringing back our piece that we've cut, we have our tab at the bottom and here's where we're going to want to add some of our uh, score tape because let me just see, will that work? Yeah. So I'm going to use a quarter inch, quarter inch score tape all the way down on my three panels three little tabs <laughs> and then um, we're going to connect the two connect the two sides so I'm going to put my little hat inside my little crown well I guess it doesn't need to sit there right now give me one second we're going to peel the adhesive and then you're just wrapping that around here, let me put that this way. We'll wrap that around. We line up our tops as much as possible. Okay. And then we get all the way down done. Okay. If you want the easy way to kind of get in there, if you want to really make sure there's a connection. You can use your bone folder or a ruler, especially when we get this long bit done. The middle piece can be a bit challenging. Okay, so we're going to get that folded in. And again, line up the one side with the score line and the tape. All right, just like that. At this point, I am going to feed through my hat. And at this point, you could, you can fill it with whatever it is. Usually there's a hat, a joke, and some kind of, of prize, whatever that may be. Sometimes it's dice, sometimes it's, you know, whatever. Um, and like I said, the joke, you know, again, because you're making these, you can totally customize them to a specific person. And when they open it, you know, the prize is, you know, if it's a young girl, maybe it's, you know, a cute little necklace, a bracelet, um, stickers, you know, whatever they're into, you can, you can fill it with whatever. So this is basically what the Christmas cracker looks like we just need to add some ribbon you know, the last time I used black and I had totally intended on using you know continuing with the theme of you know this this kind of burgundy-ish reddish ribbon I really had intended on using this one instead so it's not quite as thick I probably you know that's maybe why I went with the black one but I'm using this one for this. And you do want to make sure, oops, there, there we go. Okay, so a little bit of ribbon at the top, a little bit of ribbon at the bottom, and our fourth, our certainly last but not least favorite, holiday, Christmas, table setting decoration is complete. And, you know, like I said at the beginning, any number of these can be used as, you know, I you can have like a nice little tag. It can be used as your place setting, um, place setting, your uh, place card holder, You've got these cute little um, napkin rings. 
we have our obviously our place card holders as well as the silverware. So thank you very much for joining me today. Hopefully you will use some of these in your Christmas projects and um, let me know if you do use them. Please share with us on Facebook. I'm always really excited to find um, what people have done and how they've made it their own. So I really appreciate your time today. Hopefully you have a fabulous day. Stay safe. Stay well. Bye.